Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at a mock test from Asheville Driving Test Center. So starting the route on the test center driveway, what I always say to people is when you're moving down to the end of this driveway, whichever way you're going, you want to keep the car nice and straight and you want to get all the way to the giveaway line so you can see around the signs that are on the right hand side. If you lean right or you lean left, you're potentially going to be cutting over those lines. So you want to be really careful to keep the car nice and straight. See the pupil does a really good job of keeping the car straight and getting all the way to the end of the road before pulling out. And that gives her a good view of what's going on before doing that. As you do pull out, you're entering a 30 mile an hour zone. So you want to make sure that you pick your speed up fairly confidently, getting that speed up to a near 30 mile an hour. Just up ahead, we've got a railway crossing. So watch out for these lights. If they do start lighting up, you'll also hear the siren. And that's your cue to stop if you can. Do not try and rush through and don't try and enter the crossing area unless you've got a clear gap on the other side as well. That's why we've got the yellow box markings across it. Approaching the mini roundabout, you can see the lane markings here guiding the pupil into the right hand position to carry on straight. Be mindful that you've got to give way to cars coming from the other side who intend to turn right to your left, like the cars you can see in front of the ones waiting and as you're coming up you can see those markings on the other side see the blue car leaning in ready to turn pupil has plenty of time to cross before they get there so that's a really good decision to keep moving if they were closer then of course you'd have to be ready to give way to them now if you missed it when you come off of that mini roundabout there is a national speed limit sign so the road ahead is 60 mile an hour now you should be building up your speed if you safely can so with the queue ahead and the traffic lights it's not really appropriate until you get across those lights and into the more open road so coming up to these lights you can see the pupil taking up the left hand lane which allows us to go straight ahead once we cross that junction we can build the speed up 60 mile an hour limit remember that doesn't mean you have to do 60 it just means you can build your speed up to a safe speed as long as it's less than 60. so i would say about 40 to 50 is pretty comfortable along some of these roads occasionally you will get up to 60 but this one in particular i'd say no more than about 40 to 50 mile an hour at the absolute maximum because of the hills the bends and it's quite narrow as well now that's where your mirror use is really going to help you out too checking the left and right side frequently to see where the curb and the white line are now it's the 40 mile an hour sign there so of course make sure your speed comes down before you pass that sign if you pass the sign at a significantly higher speed than 40 then you are technically speeding because the speed limit applies at the sign so you must bring your speed down as you're coming up to the sign Anytime you've got queues of traffic ahead, as you can see the pupils slowing down nice and early, covering the mirrors as well is essential when you're changing your speed. So check your mirrors and slow down early and just leave a good gap behind the car in front of you. So you can see here there's a good space between us and that Vauxhall in front. If you're getting right up to the bumper of them, then you're relying on them not rolling back into you or you not jumping forward, especially in a manual car if you slip off the clutch while you sat still the car can jump forward. So you want to give yourself a little bit of room just in case something goes wrong. We've got some roadworks up ahead and that's what's causing these cues. Treat these lights as you would a normal set of lights. You want to keep yourself tucked into the left hand side until you need to commit to those traffic lights. Now this pupil did come out a little bit early but it didn't cause any problems so I'm not going to record a fault on that occasion but I'd have liked her to have stayed in a little bit longer before moving out around that light particularly with the queue forming in front because she couldn't guarantee that that queue was going to move and that she'd get through the light before the road was clear for her. 
as we leave the roadworks again mirror use see who's coming with you see who's following you see if anyone's trying to get around you and be mindful of the traffic on the right as well as you're going along there's the potential that these guys could get a bit impatient and start trying to turn around so you want to be watching out for any movement that indicates that a car wants to turn around watch out for cars on the side too and of course speed limit changes such as the national speed limit sign we've just passed there so that again allows us to do up to 60 mile an hour remember it's all about doing what is safe because some roads as you'll see later in this video are definitely not appropriate for 60 mile an hour even though the limit is 60. We're coming up to a set of traffic lights and you can see the warning there on the left for them you can see the direction signs up ahead as well and the big yellow sign directing you into the correct position we're going to be taking a right turn so i'd want to see the mirrors and the signal applied before those lanes open out so people know which lane you're going to go into you want to also be mindful of things like the lay-by on the right there if you signal too soon people may think you're trying to get into that lay-by rather than turning right at the traffic lights so you want to be looking ahead and just deciding when is best to put the signals on making sure you're covering the mirrors before you do that too as we come up to the lights you'll notice they are changing just as we come through i think the pupil could have potentially waited for that a speed was low enough that we should have been able to stop for that in my opinion so i'm going to give her a driver fault for continuing through that light particularly as we still had cars in front of us who were going quite slowly which caused us to linger in the junction a little bit longer than i'd have liked to now that may seem a little bit harsh to people watching this but sometimes examiners will view things differently to the way you would and they'll view things differently to the way i would so i try to lean on the harsher side of what I think an examiner would mark. Now remember, a driver fault is a low risk mistake where there's the potential for the situation to escalate, but nothing came of it at the time. So that's why I'm only putting a driver fault there. There's the potential that she could have ended up in the junction longer than she needed to be or causing problems to the traffic crossing when the lights started to change. As we travel down this road again we want to be building up our speed but keeping a good following distance on the car in front the pupil is doing a really nice job of that keeping a safe distance from the car in front but also keeping pace with them so she's hitting 40 mile an hour in this 50 zone and not letting herself drop back unnecessarily As the queue ahead starts to form, you can see the direction sign up on the left there telling us there's another junction coming up. Notice the speed signs as well. So we've got a change down to 40 mile an hour as we make this turn. We're going to be turning right towards Kirkby in Ashfield. Something I advise my pupils to look for, which can be really useful if you're following SatNav as well, is the road number. So B6020. That may come up on your SatNav either written on the screen or read out when it's giving you directions the road numbers are also really beneficial when it comes to complicated junctions such as nuttall island in the watnell test area or the m1 junction 25 in the chilwell test area these road numbers are going to be consistent as you go around those junctions so you can look out for them to find your exit and your lane if you're looking at destinations they can change on the way around and it can be easy to lose track of them because of that so road numbers are really really useful to look for when you're following sat nav or signs we're entering a 30 mile an hour zone which seems a little bit odd to have that there just after we've entered a 40 at the junction however even if we don't understand or agree with it we should look for those speed limits and obey them if you're creeping over the speed limit for any significant amount of time or a substantial amount of speed then it is going to get recorded as a serious fault. Just up ahead, I'm going to ask my pupil to pull up on the left behind a parked car. 
Now this will come up on every driving test, it's known as an angle start. When you're pulling in, you want to be really careful that you don't scrape the curbs like this pupil does. That unfortunately is going to be recorded as driver fault for this occasion. So we don't want to be grinding the tires against the curb because that's going to wear them down and damage them. When it comes to moving out from an angle start, you want to be checking your blind spot before you move out looking for oncoming cars because you've got to swing that nose nice and wide to get around the parked car and checking your blind spot a second time is my advice for that one too just before you fully commit to going turning left here a very very tight turn see how slowly the pupils coming into that corner that allows her to see through the gap before she commits to going into that narrow space between all the parked cars if you come around there too fast and there's someone coming the other way that's going to cause you to have to react quite heavily and potentially you may even get stuck as you come around there so we don't want to be doing that that's going to go down as a serious fault on your test so any tight corners like this really really slow really steady make sure you can see what you're going into and you're slow enough to hold back if the view is obstructed like this up at the end of the road we're going to be taking a right turn this junction's quite blind as well, so you'll see as the pupil comes up to it, speed goes right down to a crawl and she gets the car all the way to the end of the road before committing to pulling out. With the white car on the right especially, we've got the problem that if there's a car coming from the right, we've got no space to pull out into because we're gonna end up face to face with that oncoming car. And as you can see, the cars on the other side of the road make that even worse. So there's not really any space to get that wrong you've got to make sure you can see into these narrow roads before you commit. I'm going to ask my pupil to do a right reverse here. So pulling up on the right, the examiner will then ask you to reverse about two car lengths, keeping close to the curb. The trick to this maneuver is firstly, to make sure you line up close to the curb when you pull over. Then when you're reversing, keep the car really slow and keep looking over both of your shoulders frequently as you move backwards. The examiner will tell you when to stop and then they'll ask you to drive on again once you've done it. If you end up leaning to or from the curb, even slightly, it can misposition the car and that can cause you problems. So you want to be very aware of where the back wheels are going. If it's leaning away from the curb, steer right towards it. And if it's leaning to the curb, steer left away from it. As you're moving away, you want to be checking your left blind spot before you move. And then as you start moving, it's well worth double checking that left blind spot just in case you've missed something. You'll also want to be mindful of anything coming the other way, especially in a narrow road like this where you haven't really got the space to meet those vehicles. You need a clear path ahead before moving out into a road like this. If there's plenty of space, by all means get out there if you've got a safe amount of room to get across to your side of the road before any oncoming cars have to react to your movements. As we come to the end of the road, another really tight blind junction, and we wanna get right up to that giveaway line to be able to see around those walls in order to get out safely. And you wanna take this turn really slowly. If you notice it, there is a bollard on the left-hand side of the turn in the middle of the road. So as you're coming out, you want to be very aware of that and how you're going to have to position the car nice and tightly to the left. On this occasion, what this pupil does is go a little bit too far forward as she's making the turn. This is probably caused by her worrying about the curb on the left and trying not to hit it. That unfortunately causes a little twitch in the steering to avoid the bollard. So I'm going to record that as a control fault on this occasion. Now again, driver faults are something that is low risk but could escalate very easily. So in that kind of situation, if the pupil doesn't correct the steering, then she could end up catching the curb at the bottom of the bollards. And of course, that is a serious risk because it could do damage to the car or it could put people around at risk as the car bounces away from it. Up ahead, we've got a police car pulled up on the left and some cars on the right. You can see the people making a really good decision just to let those cars pass before going through the gap. So really nicely done there. You notice the car on the right starting to pull out as we went through. There's not really a lot that people could do differently in that situation. So as long as she kept moving and kept it safe, then there'd be no problem there. If she panicked and ended up stopping, that would cause an obstruction and that of course would pick her up some kind of fault potentially a serious one for reacting inappropriately to that so you want to make sure that you don't hesitate to other vehicles pulling out or moving off where you're already committed you want to keep yourself moving 
Now, I've seen a number of times when I've been teaching that pupils are already in a gap carrying on down a road and a car will come the other way and they'll try to stop in the middle of the gap because they're just so worried about being in the way of the oncoming car. The fact is you can't stop in a position which obstructs the road and expect the other car to get through. You've got to keep your wheels turning to clear the road in order that that other car can get through safely. Just up ahead, we're going to be taking a right turn, and this junction is on a bend where the road bends to the left, we're going to turn right. So what you want to be doing here is making sure you lean into the left before the right hand turn. That's going to keep you out of the way of the oncoming cars. You see the pupil does a really nice job of keeping back from the turn, not getting in the way of the oncoming vehicle there before making a way across into that new road. So really nicely done there. I'd have liked her to have leaned left a little bit more, but what she did didn't cause any problems, so I'm not going to record any faults on that occasion. Now carrying on down the new road, we've got various cars parked on the left and oncoming. I want to see lots of mirror use. Remember to check your left mirror before you go in past those cars and your right mirror before you come out to go around them. If you're carrying on down a road like this as well, it's a very, very good spot for pulling up on the left. So that's what I'm going to ask my pupil to do. You'll be asked to do this several times on your driving test. All the examiners want to see is that you pick a safe place to pull over. You signal in order to let people behind know that you're pulling over and that when you move off, you check it's clear and safe using that blind spot check before moving out. Now, unfortunately, this pupil did check a blind spot, but she seemed to think she could get away in front of the car that was coming up behind. So I've had to break for her. Where the examiner intervenes on your test, it is likely to go down as a dangerous fault, and that is a straight fail, unfortunately. So if you're not sure when there's a vehicle coming up behind you, the best answer to it is to wait until it's gone, until the road's completely clear, and then move on. But definitely don't try and rush out in front of a vehicle because that will pick you up a serious fault at best. As we come down this road, plenty of parked cars on either side. So again, the speed is kept nice and low and there's lots of mirror use from this pupil too. We want to be checking that left side as we're passing vehicles in order to see how much clearance we've got and that we're safe on that side and the right side, of course, before we move out or when oncoming vehicles pass as well, just to make sure that we've got a good amount of space around us as much as we possibly can. Up ahead, you can see the bollard and the parked car. The door's just shut on that parked car, so that gives us a clue they may try and pull out as we're coming around. So the pupil is extra cautious coming around here, and that is perfectly reasonable in my opinion, especially when you add in the guy there walking out between cars to get into his Tesla. So very, very mindful when there's pedestrian activity going on, whether it's doors opening and closing or people walking out between cars. If you can't physically move out and give them space, then like this pupil did, you want to be slowing right down as you go past them or even stopping completely if you're not sure that you can get through safely or you're not comfortable with the amount of space that you're leaving them. Just up ahead, we're taking another right turn, and this is another one where the junction is on the bend. So you need to make sure for this one in particular that you're slowing down because the view of the oncoming cars is poor and that you're leaning into the left before you make the turn. Once you can see it's safe, then you can make your way into that new turn. Now you notice the pupil did straight line that a little bit. However, she did it at a point where the view was clear. You could see what was going on. So I'm not going to record a fault for that because she could see it was safe to do what she did. However, I'd advise to just go a little bit further forward before you start leaning across the oncoming traffic. On this new road, you'll notice just up ahead, we've got a national speed limit sign. Once we get clear of all these cars, we start getting into the uh, more rural section of the road. 
you've got a national speed limit sign, meaning the speed limit on this road is 60 mile an hour. And as you can see, it just is not appropriate to do 60 down this road. As we go along, I'll point out a few of the hazards and a few of the mistakes the pupil made along here, which just demonstrate how the speed limit is not always an appropriate thing to aim for. Up ahead, as we come around some of the bends, the pupil is picking a pace up a little bit too much and it can cause a problem if you've got oncoming cars. Notice the car bounce here, that was quite abrupt and that was partially down to the speed the pupil was carrying. That's going to go down as a driver fault, unfortunately. Just ahead, we've got a narrow bridge. We've got clear signage telling us that we have priority. But as you can see here, you don't always have a clear path. So you've got to make sure you're ready for oncoming traffic as you come up to narrow gaps like this. Even where you have priority, somebody may already be coming the other way. As we come around this bend here, pupil is very, very close to the hedges and it's a bit too uncomfortable for my liking. So I'm going to record a serious fault for her positioning. I think part of that was she was a bit worried about the oncoming cars and just overcompensated by leaning away from them too far. Another narrow bridge. So you want to make sure you can get through safely and that you're not meeting an oncoming car under that bridge. It is too narrow to meet an oncoming vehicle under. Now you can see that by the vehicle coming the other way, waiting for us to get out of that little section of road. And we should definitely consider that if someone's already coming the other way, coming up to that bridge, it does get quite narrow either side of the bridge as well. So be very sensible about how much speed you're carrying when you approach sections of road like that or narrow bridges like that. Just up ahead, you'll see the 30 mile an hour speed limit and how the road bends to the left. It's a very difficult corner to see around and there is almost always a parked car just after the bend. So see how slowly the pupil's taking her time around here. That is absolutely perfect. Right mirrors before moving out around the parked vehicle, dipping back into that left side with a left mirror check, ready for the oncoming car. As they turn off, back on that right mirror before moving out around the last vehicle, up to the end of the road, ready for a right turn. It is quite tricky to see out of this junction because the road from both sides bends away, meaning you've only got a short amount of distance that you can see any approaching vehicles. So you want to be right up to that giveaway line before you make a decision and just making sure that you are completely safe before you cross that line. If there's anything coming from either directions, then you're not going to make it out safely. You want a clear path on both sides. And sometimes that can mean just waiting for a little bit longer than you feel comfortable doing. The pupil does a really nice job there getting out and getting her speed back up as she leaves the junction. We've got a big uphill section coming up here which causes oncoming cars to go a bit faster than they should sometimes. Coming up the hill of course, the weight of the car is working against you so you're going to need to put your foot down a little bit harder to make sure you keep your speed up. Make sure your speed's appropriate. Again, we've got a few slow warnings. So the pupil's sitting around 20 mile an hour, but she's got her foot down firmer to keep that speed because that's quite a steep hill we're going up. And again, keep on those mirrors because while we're doing 20, you may find someone behind wants to overtake. And of course, if we can spot that happening before it happens, then it's going to help us keep safe. Making our way along with the queue of traffic in front, you can see the pupil is keeping a really good space on the vehicle in front. We don't want to be getting too close to those vehicles, particularly when the road is going uphill, because if they make a mistake and end up rolling backwards, by keeping a bit of space between us, we give ourselves protection against their mistake. If you're right up on their bumper, that tow bar is going straight through your radiator and that's an expensive repair job. Even if it is their fault, it's a preventable situation just by you being a little bit further back from the queue of traffic. Up ahead, we've got another section road which is quite narrow due to the parked vehicles. So you'll want to be on the mirrors looking ahead for any oncoming cars. And if you're not sure about the gap, just like this pupil has, you wait for the oncoming cars to clear before you stick your nose out in there. If you do think you've got an opportunity to go, then make sure you do it with confidence, checking your mirrors before you pull out around those parked cars. If you pull out and the confidence isn't there, you're gonna hesitate and you're gonna get stuck in that gap and that's gonna cause problems for the oncoming vehicles. So if you're gonna go, get on with it and get on with it with confidence. 
If you don't know, then you don't go. And that's a really good way of remembering it and keeping yourself safe in these kind of situations too. As we approach the mini roundabout just up ahead, we're going to be turning right, and there are two lanes for that. What we want to be doing if you're turning right is getting all four wheels fully into your lane and then keeping close to the mini roundabout as you make your turn. The pupil on the way up here did have her left wheels on the white lines, and that can cause a problem for vehicles behind. So I'm going to record a driver fault for that. It wasn't enough to warrant anything more than a driver fault, in my opinion. It just could have caused a problem if someone was going past in that lane. If you notice in the bushes, there was a 20 mile an hour sign there and a school zone warning. Now, this is an advisory speed limit. It's not compulsory. So when you're traveling along this road, legally, you can still do 30 mile an hour. However, the examiners want to see you make a sensible decision based on that advice. So if it's particularly busy, slow yourself down and obey that 20 advice. If it's nice and clear, by all means, keep going at 30. Turning left, this can be quite a tight road to get into as well. Um, there's a lot of parked cars on the right. You can see how it's getting quite narrow just here. And up ahead, you can see the bend as well going around the front of that house. Now, this is a really easy part to get caught out by because the oncoming cars are often in the middle of the road because typically there's a parked car just outside that house. As you can see there, the pickup truck there in the middle of the road, you want to come around bends like that really slowly and tucked all the way into your side of the road to create as much room as you can and as much time to respond as you can. If you come around there quickly or you're cut in the corner, it's just going to cause you problems if there's something coming the other way. So take your time and tuck into your side of the road where your vision or your space are limited. Along this road, we've got plenty of parked cars. So lots of in and out driving, lots of meeting oncoming cars. Again, just keep your speed suitable to the environment. Make sure you've got plenty of time to react and plan to the oncoming cars and make sure you're tucking in where you need to using those mirrors before you change your position your right mirror before you move out your left mirror before you move in again if you're not using your mirrors the examiners are not going to know that you're aware of your surroundings and that of course can go against you if you do make a mistake it's very important to make sure the examiner understands that you understand what's going on around you at all times and lots of head movements and lots of mirror use just glancing around constantly is going to help you and that's going to pay off in the long run too when you're out on your own and you're having to depend on your own awareness because you haven't got your instructor sat next year Notice how the pupil is keeping her speed at around 20 mile an hour coming around that bend. That just gives her plenty of time to see that the path is clear. Or if there's oncoming cars, plenty of time to move in and let them pass. Notice the warning on the left there as well that there's a bend ahead. Now whilst the bend itself might be pretty obvious, what the warning is telling you is to slow down because it's sharper than you may expect. So taking your time around those bends just making sure you can see if there's oncoming cars around there or if there's space around there too before you start building your speed up afterwards as well so you want to be making sure that you've got plenty of time to see what's going on and to respond to what you can see that's going to help you not have to react sharply by having to brake heavily or move the car side to side heavily to get out of the way of something so make sure you're looking up and ahead into those roads before you commit to them At the end of the road, we've got a mini roundabout where we'll be turning left. As we approach this, just be mindful of the junction on the left there that you signal after you pass that. So mirrors and signal before you make the turn, of course. Now, being a mini roundabout, the traffic from the right has priority over you, of course. So that is where most of your attention is naturally going to go. But you want to make sure you're looking up to your left before you pull out, ensuring that you've got a safe path ahead. If you don't look left before you pull out, you might miss things like that schoolgirl waiting to cross the road. If we turn without looking, we can't guarantee that she's still on the pavement when we come round. So make sure you always look up into your new road before you commit to it.
Up ahead, we've got a mini roundabout, and the priority, of course, belongs to the car on the right waiting to pull out. The pupil is a little bit late to respond to that, so the braking is a little bit firm. Unfortunately, that was just a case of not realizing that car was going to go early enough. Now, because of the heavy braking, that has to go down as a fault. And unfortunately, I'm going to record it as a driver fault, not a serious, because there was nothing behind us when this happened. But that could very quickly escalate into a serious or dangerous fault if you've got traffic behind you. So be very careful about approaching junctions. Make sure you're looking around and spotting that you've got a safe gap to go. And if there's anything coming, be ready to stop. Uh, the traffic lights were continuing straight you notice as we come up to them the markings are really really poor so sometimes i find pupils end up in that left hand lane now i get asked this a lot if i go the wrong way on my driving test will i fail and the answer is no you will not fail for going the wrong way what you will fail for is trying to correct your direction but doing it unsafely so if you find yourself in that left lane by all means check your mirrors and signal and move over if it's safe but if it's not, or you don't have time to do that, just go left. It's not a problem to go the wrong way, and the examiners will simply reroute you to get you back onto the test route. Just up ahead, you're going to see some give way signs, but they haven't got give way written in them. This is a pre-warning that there's a junction up ahead, and that is your cue to start looking for that junction. We're going to be turning right at the mini roundabout at the end of this road. So mirrors and signal, of course, before you get there, take up the right hand position, which this pupil does beautifully. And then as you get to the junction, remember, being a mini roundabout, we got to give way to traffic crossing from the right. As soon as that's clear, we can start moving that left side should give way to you. Once we leave the roundabout, a little mirror check and build up that speed. So the mirror check is just gonna cover your back if someone's trying to come off the roundabout and overtake you straight away. Or if there's something going on behind you that you need to know about, like a blue light vehicle approaching from the other side of the junction, then you can prepare for it. So the mirror use is really important just to keep you aware of your surroundings. And that awareness, as I've said in so many of my other videos, it is absolutely important, not just for passing your test, but for when you're out there on your own. Keep your eyes moving, keep your mirrors covered, and keep looking around constantly. That way you'll notice things like the national speed limit sign just up ahead, the left-hand lane taking us to the left turn, and as you come up to these traffic lights, you'll notice the fact that these lights do not apply to the left turn. So as we come up to them, we're going to bear off to the left and you'll see the give way sign on the left side. If you're not looking around constantly, you're going to miss things like that and that's going to cause you problems. So be very mindful of those filter lanes. Not all of them are traffic light controlled. Looking around constantly is going to help you decide which are which. Just up ahead, we've got a 30 mile an hour zone and a mini roundabout where we're going straight ahead that's going to bring us back up to the test center again we want to watch for cars from the right who are going to turn across our path and we want to be looking ahead for that railway crossing to remember if those lights come on you must stop and keep the crossing clear we don't want to go onto the crossing zone until the other side's clear then you can make your way across safely we don't want to end up getting stuck in that crossing just up ahead, we're going to be turning left back into the test center. Coming from this side, you want to be turning really tight behind the blue sign that says Sherwood House, keeping into the first lane as you do. So if you go wide, you'll be going into the oncoming traffic, which is the people coming out of the test center. The pupil does a really nice job of that on this occasion, and that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope you found it useful watching this video. If you have, please like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I'll keep them coming. In the meantime, thank you for watching and God bless.